This is Dave Brixius. This is Ed O'Brien. And this is the CFA The Program. Wow. Good to be back. I know I, I try to do some stuff without my main man uh, filling in here. I'm um, trying to at least keep you guys up to date, keep you guys informed of what's going on over the last couple of weeks. But my man's back. He had, I guess, an off day, man. So <laughs> he, could, he could definitely step into the studio here and uh, help out and keep us informed and keep you guys informed as well. That's we are getting into the crunch time right now. I mean, it's definitely uh, one more game left in the regular season mm -hmm. and then playoffs. You know, some people are fighting for their life and some are looking for those uh, playoff positions here. And, you know, this is a rivalry week. Yeah, big it's, week, it's big, big week. Weeks and uh, actually a lot of uh, playoff positions on the line as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and just going back to what he said, you know, we have to be back on the air. We're going to be uh, the show, the program will be going on throughout the playoffs, uh, champion, Super Bowl, and the uh, Turnpike Classic. And, you know, we appreciate everybody that's been asking yep. about, uh, you know, when it, when's, when's the program coming? Well, well, we'll be here for the rest of the year. So we appreciate all that support uh, you guys giving us. Definitely. It's awesome. Yeah, but well, you mentioned the rivalry week. You know, this is it. These are your crosstown games, your inner city games, you know, whatever going on. Mm -hmm. You got Central off the pulling name. You know, I mean, that's always a nice rivalry there right around the back here. You got Harrisburg, Harrisburg. You know, what, what better way? And both those teams in the midget level are uh, sitting, I think, one are at first place in both their conferences. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the class who's going to win the city, but then who's also going to come out of there in that midget level, I think, with that number one seed. So that's a huge, huge thing coming up. And, the, you know, you can go down all, all the conferences, you know, the American Conference, Federal Conference, you know, the National Conference, all big games. I mean, you got Cedar Cliff, New Cumberland. Mm -hmm. You know, all these teams are battling it out. Very few are there any games that aren't, that aren't like I would consider what we consider a rivalry, you know, close neighbors and stuff like that. You know, you got West Perry, Susquehanna. It's just, I think it's going to be a fun weekend. So no matter where they're ranked right now, I think this is a game that, you know, people want to put their staple on. You don't want to lose your rivalry game. You know, and I think that's what it goes down to. I mean, you can think back to some of the high school games around here, you know, when those teams get up, they always get up for those big games. You know, no matter how bad one team is or how great one team is, for some reason, it's just one of those things, you know, it's a rivalry game, it's time to get at it. And it's funny you mentioned, you know, the high school, it trickles down from the high school mm -hmm. all the way to the youth level, and some of these teams are basically in the same neighborhoods with only, you know, whatever the boundary lines are Yes. Uh, in the middle of them, um, like Sotara and City East. Yep. And, you know, obviously the holy names for Central Dolphin, uh, Harrisburg versus Harrisburg. Yeah. <laughs> You probably you got, you got you got family against family in some cases <laughs> in that matchup. Probably. You know, so and some of these uh, matchups again um, definitely playoff implications like uh, Northern Mechanicsburg. Yep. Um, definitely on the pony level, and I think on you know several a couple of other levels as well. Um, this is Northern's first year in national conference, moving up from the federal, and uh, their teams are pretty much represented pretty well. Uh, you know, and that's what you're looking for. You know. What teams have done well so far and what teams have faded off? And some of these teams, you know, and that's what I think is so interesting about it. You know, you, you see when you have a program, and I don't know if you, you really have those dominant programs like we once saw, like your Cullen Valleys who would just, I mean, when they were separate leagues, the CFA, the K, KMFC, where Cullen Valley used to just dominate year after year after year after year. And then you look at, you know, when it was a CFA, you look at Hoy and A, year after year after year after year. You know, the midget team was constantly winning. The pony teams were always up there, the peewee team. Now you start to see a lot more level playing field with who's up there. I mean, you look at this year, we just look at the midget level in the top conference. You have Hoy Name, who played Central Dolphin last year for the Super Bowl. They're towards the bottom of the pack now. You know what I mean? So I think you see a lot of parity and stuff like that that is going on at, at, at all this. Um, and I think that's what's really great about it. You know, you're not seeing those dominant teams that just every single year, year in and year out that won. Even though that's great to see a team can do that, it's also great to see other teams stepping up, you know, having that chance because, hey, this group of kids come in. I mean, look at East, East Penn last year, that dominant midget program they had. I mean, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable team. And they're down, you know, now off, you know, off the top pack there. But I think it's just great to see. Definitely. And it seems like these things are like cyclical. Mm -hmm. And you can't assume just because... Uh, let's say the pony team is great yep. one year. That next year they go up the midgets and just kill everything. Yep. Um, you know, it's just I don't want to say I guess it's where parity. Yeah. It is a lot of parity, and you know, kids are just getting better. And some of these programs have probably looked at some of these programs that I guess weren't winning so much in the past. Probably, you know, I'll be honest, got tired of it. Yeah. You know, prepared their kids a little bit more better. Um, actually, kids are coming into the uh, football more with yeah. more skills. Now as well. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that's a big thing. You know, you see these kids that are, 
at this youth level going up. And the two things that I, I, I see is like you mentioned that these kids are becoming a little more prepared, you know, getting themselves ready. But then also I think you saw, I, I think we see a reduction. I don't know if it's all across the board, but I see some of these programs that didn't have enough kids come out or very small numbers, you know, 14, 15 to field a team. Right. You know what I mean? And it's not just one team, it's a couple of teams. The other teams, yeah, you still have your 20, 25, 30, whatever. But there's a lot of teams out there that have dropped off. And you got to wonder, is it because of the concussions, people holding their kids out of sports? Mm -hmm. Is it injuries? What is it? What's going on? I mean, I spoke at a couple conferences this year, and I spoke to a couple guys that deal with concussions. You know, guys that, that are in the forefront of trying to figure out how to help reduce concussions. You know, all of them say the same thing. Stop buying those expensive helmets. It's neck strength and head strength that is going to help reduce the number of concussions. It's the number one thing, but a lot of people don't want to hear it because that's a lot of work. It's easy to go out and buy a helmet, and it's not easy to actually strengthen your neck the proper way. But they also said there's a 10% reduction this year in youth football. They have, they have a projected rate that if it keeps going at the same way it is, in 2020 it should be down to 50% of what it was in 2012. You know, reduction of kids playing because of fear. And that's not a good thing because if we know now how to prevent that fear, we just got to start implementing, us as parents, us as coaches, us as everybody, get the word out. It's not the helmet. You can buy a $5,000 helmet and guess what? Number one thing they say, it helps prevent against skull fractures and it does nothing else to help prevent, you know, I mean, concussions. So I think they're the two things that I'm seeing right now is why we see so much, you know, so parody, like you talked about, you know, of this evenness out there. Definitely, uh, you know, my son playing for, you know, one of these teams out here, uh, just actually just seeing the numbers on all levels, it's definitely not as, much, as many kids out mm -hmm. for these teams, even um, in the lower conferences, like the National mm -hmm. Conference, mm -hmm. like you have the American and the National. It's not a lot of kids out there. Uh, it's like if a couple of kids were to go down, you know, that team might be. Yeah. In some cases, may not be even fill the team because yeah. they're only coming with 13 you know, 12 or 13 kids, and yeah. I'm not sure what the amount is. You can, I mean, obviously, you can play it for 11, but one kid yeah. goes down. It's, it's kind of a dangerous proposition, but <laughs> yeah, it goes back to what you're saying. Yeah. I think the whole concussion thing is scared off a yes. whole lot of parents with good reason. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think we, there's knowledge there. Them. Yes, yeah. education. And I so, think that's what needs to be done. I know I'm always trying to press it out there. I'm always trying to send information out about different exercises you guys can do, implement right at home. You don't need these high-tech equipment things to help prevent some of this stuff. So I think that's the number one thing. I think another thing that, that I noticed too, and I know we talked about it here before going on air, is that a lot of these kids now are bigger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you have a weight class to set, which I don't have a problem, that's fine. You know, you set your weight class, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. You know, you have kids at one end of the spectrum and other kids at other. But I think a lot of kids maybe get lost in the shuffle because, hey, he's too big to play pony, but I don't want him playing midgets yet because mentally he's not ready. Right. You know, that's a huge thing. If he's not mentally ready, you don't want to move him up. Or if he's a midget, boom, he's, he's taxed out. He's going on to the high school level or the junior high, whatever other program they got. So I think maybe some of the kids that way also are getting moved on just because these kids are, a lot of them are a lot bigger. And you can see it a lot at the, at the midget level. Mm -hmm. um, the weight limit is 155. Yes. And, the, you know, a lot of these kids are kind of small, especially on certain levels. They might be weighing, you know, 100, 110 pounds. And, you know, the parents, I mean, with good reason, don't want to put them yep. up against 155 pounders yep. at, that, at that particular age. Yep. In high school, you know, we realize some kids are going to be bigger, but yep. they don't want to put their kids mm -hmm. to that, you know, I guess to, to that punishment at yep. some point. So they'll wait the two years out, yeah. see what happens in high school. I mean, I've had parents say that's their plan. Yeah. Um, if their kid doesn't grow or whatever, we're going to make them sit out a couple years. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a tough, tough situation because you lose two years, but then in other respect, you save two years on your body. You know, guys, they don't have that, that wear and tear of getting hit after hit after hit. You sometimes, in that respect, sometimes, you know, you can save your body up. So. I think it's, it's going both ways, but you know, coming down to this last weekend here with the rivalry weekend, this is going to set the stage for seeds in the playoffs, yeah. and then who gets in, who, get, who doesn't get in. You know what I mean? And then once the playoffs happen, anything can happen. I don't care if you're number one seed, number eight seed, whatever it is, you can be knocked off. I mean, I think that's how even this, the, um, the league has become this year. Yeah, and it's funny because I tell, you know, I, I've seen a lot of games, and a lot of it comes down to even. Let's say you have a one against the eight seed. Mm -hmm. Well, if that number eight seed 
in, in some cases makes those tackles that don't lead to long plays or that, you know the number one team might come into to the game mm -hmm. thinking all oh, high they're going to just beat you know, mm -hmm. beat the snot out of somebody. Mm -hmm. Again, these are kids. Yep. You're right. Anything can happen. So. And who knows? Maybe maybe that eight seed had kids that went through injuries. They finally got healthy at the end of the year. One, two, or three to get in there, mm -hmm. and then boom! Now 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 they run with it. So I think our advice to everybody out there: you got to be prepared. Use this game as your tune up to get yourself ready. Teams that are in, and get yourself seated in the playoffs. But also get you know it's going to be a big rivalry weekend. But get yourself ready to go. Get yourself motivated. Get yourself pumped up because. It's here, you know. You, all that hard work you guys put back in July, starting July and in July there, it's here. It's time, you know, to rock and roll. Last regular season game. Some of you guys, this could be your last game at these levels, mm -hmm. you know. Or if you're a midget, this could be your last game ever. You're moving on to high school. If maybe, maybe you're not going to play high school ball. Maybe you aren't going to something else. So this could be your last game ever. So give everything you have. You know, God, you mentioned those, even those teams that may not, you know, may, already know they're not going to make the playoffs. You still want to go into this last game, give it all you got because. You know, you've been practicing since July, yeah. and you want to finish out what you started. And actually, you know, any I feel as though any, even though you're supposed to, any kid that, you know, even if they're having a bad season, but you continue to practice, come to the games, work hard, mm -hmm. you know, there is something to be learned from that yes. um, that you won't see in the win and loss column. Um, and, you know, I think that's something just to remind kids. You know, the name of the game is the win. Yeah. But at the end of the day, learning about being a, a teammate, learning about commitment, Learning about uh, working hard and uh, just finishing out what you started, uh, giving 100. percent I think those, those some those are things that can uh, be valued as well. So. No question. I uh, just want to remind everybody that we will be having our, our football academy again this year, starting up sometime in November, uh, late November, early December. We'll get all that information out so people that are looking forward getting skills. We're going to have some good uh, good qualified coaches this year. Some yeah. guys that have played in the past. Definitely. You know, definitely. Um, are coming back to help out, which is great to see. But uh, definitely be on the lookout for that. We'll get you guys all that information. But we want to wish all the players, all the coaches, all the reps, everybody who's definitely dedicated this whole season, best of luck, last regular season game. Give everything you have. Go out there with the bang and uh, bring it home. You know, if you guys got to get that one seed or if you got to win this game to get in the playoffs, give everything you have. All right, don't leave it out there and say, man, I wish I would have done this. Don't say wish. Just get the job done. All right, and of course we'll be here next week uh, at the rivalry weekend, again, and going into play. Also, again, the program will be in effect uh, for the rest of the football season. So, looking forward to it, my man Ed. Once again, always a pleasure, man. You guys definitely get out there, keep working hard. All right, so it's Ed O'Brien. This is Dave Bricks, and get out there and unleash that potential, baby. Program.